Valeron team, and uh, thank you for joining us in this interview after the session on shared electric mobility uh, at the IAE 2021, which was the first online uh, conference from IAE. Uh, welcome here to this uh, interview, uh, which is uh, being done at the FSR, the Learners School of Regulation. So let's let's talk about the session that we just had it, and uh, it, it was on shared electric mobility, mm -hmm. and uh, we had three speakers uh, in this uh, 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 in this session. Basically, we had uh, Professor Daniel Spelling from UC Davis, Professor Willett Kempton from University of Delaware, and uh, Miss Alexandra Lukovoy from Vulog, which is a company that provides uh, shared electric mobility services. So let us know what is your, uh, and, and I have to mention that you chaired the session. Uh, this is the first thing that I had to mention. So please let us know uh, what was your uh, takeaways? Uh, what was your takeaway from the session? Please. Sure, so first of all, thank you for um, the invitation to chat with you about it. Um, so really, I, you know, I, I thought the, I thought the three speakers kind of conveyed um, three different aspects, but complementary aspects of of the transportation um, of of reforming and revolutionizing transportation and mobility. Um, Dan Sperling, his comments were really, um, you know, the focus was really on kind of changing transportation modalities, um, you know, what it's going to take to move away from, and to some extent, his comments were, were focused on transportation systems in North America, which are very much, you know, they're very much focused on private vehicle use. Um, so, you know, a single vehicle with a single occupant and basically how do you move towards alternative means of transportation that um, are higher density, more efficient, or, you know, moving away from um, moving away from fossil fueled vehicles to, you know, other types of transportation, including transportation electrification. Um, the the second speaker, Willett Kempton, you know, I I would characterize his um, his talk was more on kind of what the economics of transportation of electrification looks like. So um, I think the two key takeaways from what he said was that from a you know just from an electrical infrastructure perspective, there's not necessarily a lot of electrical infrastructure that needs to be built to accommodate transportation electrification, as long as you're able to use and manage the um, electric mobility fleet intelligently. So, you know, as long as you're able to, you know, schedule and manage charging in an efficient fashion. And then of course, you know, there was a lot of discussion of these ancillary revenue streams that can be generated if you're able to use um, the transportation fleet for vehicle to grid or vehicle to building or vehicle to vehicle services. And, um, you know, a lot of the, that sort of the second theme, a lot of the focus was on kind of, you know, how um, TSO, RTO, ISO markets, you know, those are going to be the big driver of, of making that, um, making that vision possible. Um, and then, Alexandra's talk, you know, I, I viewed it as basically describing a specific, you know, development. It's, it was an illustrative case study of a, you know, specific platform mobility, um, mobility sharing platform that Vulog has been developing and piloting. And, you know, what are the, what are the lessons that have been learned from what they've done? And of course, um, you know, some of the unique challenges that they've had to confront over the past year as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. So, you know, the 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 three talks really kind of were very complementary to one another and kind of laid out, you know, what it's going to take to uh, reform and make transportation and mobility more sustainable in the long run uh, as compared to 
how transportation systems are organized and structured today. Great, thank you. As you said, they were very complimentary. Uh, Daniel is starting here to read uh, why the new electrification and decarbonization of the transportation sector and we in, ended up with uh, a solution that was provided by Alexandra on uh, using shared, use, uh, shared electric cars, cars to reduce the number of uh, internal combustion engine cars, private ownership of these cars. So one of the barriers that Daniel was mentioning was uh, that we out as consumers uh, are the, one of the main barriers to adoption of electric vehicles. So I, I, I wanted to know if you uh, actually got this uh, perception as well of what has been discussed today or uh, if you have anything else in mind. Yeah, I mean, that, that certainly is a barrier, you know, consumers, um, you know, any time that you're any time that you're introducing a new or disruptive technology, there is going to be, you know, at the consumer level, there's going to be either resistance or reticence, um, you know, customers fundamentally, they're not accustomed to this new technology. Um, now, for there's a small segment of the consumer base that that's actually a, an advantage. So, you know, there is a small segment of technology enthusiasts. And if you offer a new or novel technology to them, that's actually a selling point. But, you know, a lot of people, there's, there's risk aversion. They, you know, they're familiar with the internal combustion engine vehicle, electric vehicles, a new concept to them, or, they're accustomed to having, you know, two cars at home. The idea of, you know, relying upon shared mobility or ride sharing or vehicle sharing or whatever, you know, there's going to be some resistance to that. So that's always, you know, it's not unique to transportation. That's always when you're when you're undergoing some sort of technology innovation or technology turnover, you're always going to encounter that as an issue. Um, you know, the only, the only thing I would add is, you know, for some people, transportation is a very, you know, it's, it's almost, it's almost viewed as being a necessity of life in some ways. So, you know, it's, it's different than uh, some people may perceive it as different than, you know, a change in, you know, change in using, uh, iOS or an Android phone or change in, um, change in, you know, some sort of consumer electronics or something like that, just because of the nature of transportation and how people view it as very, you know, kind of critical to day-to-day -day functioning in society. Great, absolutely. And uh, the one thing that uh, Bill, Bill uh, uh, mentioned was the fact that, also Daniel mentioned it, that uh, most of the cars uh, uh, that are privately owned, they are 95% of the time not used and they are parked and uh, they have this huge potential to if they are electric, become electric to provide these uh, services, storage and ancillary services to the grid. So uh, it would be great if you also reflect on this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because in some ways, the um, in some ways, what Willett was discussed for the vision that Dan and Alexandra have, you know, Dan and Alexandra's vision is for is for essentially, you know, part of their vision is you you share vehicles, so you you increase the utilization of the vehicles, or conversely, you you bring that ninety five percent number down um, because you know, as opposed to a vehicle being dedicated to use by a single driver, you know, now it's, it's a shared resource and you're going to increase its utilization. And in some ways that, you know, you could argue that that's essentially part of what Willett was discussing, which is that if you have this large stock of vehicles that um, is, is sitting idle, you know, 90, 95% of the time, 
that basically means that you have this this bank of resources, this bank of again, if the vehicles are electrified, this bank of energy storage capacity or capability that could be used um, for providing grid services. Now, you know, at the end, at the end of the day, will it said, you know, to the extent that you increase the use and you reduce the extent to which vehicles are sitting idle, you know, from the perspective of society as a whole, that's probably a net benefit because, you know, that means you have to manufacture fewer vehicles and you're going to have less kind of like, you know, idle capacity that's not being used for something. So even though there's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a conflict in those two visions, I think in the end, you know, to the extent that you increase the use of, of the vehicle stock, that, you know, in net that may reduce the size of the vehicle stock. And so that is a net, you know, net benefit um, potentially, you know, to society as a whole. Great. Thank you, Ramsey, for this interview and for your time and for the great session that you shared. Thanks a lot. Uh, Thank you so much.